In this tutorial, I'm going to run through one of the live tutorials that we actually did in class. Uh, this is the robot that we built in Photoshop using just basic shapes. And just to uh, help with remembering the basic concepts and the tools and the functions inside Photoshop that we used, I'm going to run through it again here uh, to make sure that uh, everybody can look back over the things that we covered early on in the term in their own time. So I'm going to switch over to a new document I have open here. I'm not going to explain through the process of opening it. Uh, there's always the first Photoshop tutorial video for that. Uh, instead I'm going to jump straight over to the shape tools uh, to put, start putting together the basic shapes that compose him. I'm going to start first uh, with his actual body itself here, this rectangle that makes up uh, the the majority of his I guess torso would be the right word even though it's a robot so I'm gonna just click and drag one out I'm not really worried about proportion here uh, just about getting in the right place so I dragged it out I switched back to my arrow so I can kinda of move it around and also you're gonna notice that it goes straight to a black stroke around the edges and a white fill for the shape now if I select the shape tool again with this one selected in the layers palette you can see how it appeared down here uh, it gives me the parameters to change these up at the top. The fill and the stroke are clearly labeled. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a, a nice easy fill here. And I'm going to switch over to the stroke one and go up here to the top left, white with a red stripe through it, no color, and select that. So now I have the shape, went back to my arrow, and you can see there's no stroke around the edges. So there's part one. That's the first basic one. Now I'm basically I need to create this, this uh, rectangle joined with a circle. It's basically a semicircle. And <clears throat> put those together. However, there is one issue that tends to come up in Photoshop when we're building with shapes. And, that if I, and that is if I just run straight to the shape tool and click and hold down and go to the ellipse and add this shape on there, you'll see it actually put them on the same layer. It did not create a new layer, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, there's several different ways to get around this. Uh, some of them seem to work less than others. I'm sure Photoshop will continue updating and they'll continue f to find ways to fix that. Right now, the absolute 100% guaranteed way to get around it is to go down before you create the shape to the New Layer button down here in the bottom of the Layers palette. It looks like a sticky note. And if I click that and then click and drag out holding Shift to make sure I get a good proportion of a perfect circle, then it puts it on its own layer. It fills it in on that new layer that we just laid down so they are separate and I can move them independently from one another. So I'm going to give this one the same treatment with the fill and the stroke. Again, you have to have the shape tool selected in order to change these parameters for the individual one and you'll see again it's highlighted here. That shows which layer is currently active. Now I kind of want to get these lined up. I'm going to let Photoshop help me a little bit. I'll even zoom in here using Command Plus and just kind of line this up. I'm not going to get it perfect. Uh, I could take the time to do so, but honestly, as long as it's close, it'll do justice here. So what I did is I used the arrow and I used the transform controls, which are listed at the top, and just kind of sized it down. I held Shift when I sized it, scaled it down. Uh, to make sure it stayed in perfect proportion. I didn't want to warp it and make it too short or too tall or too wide. Uh, so I held shift while I was doing that. Now I'm going to go back to my arrow and it's going to ask me if I want to apply it. You can do it this way, hit apply. I also could have just put hit the check mark you can see kind of up here. There's a couple different ways to do it. The important thing is though that you just confirm what you did with the transform. There we go. There's both ways to do it right, right there. All right, so this one's laid out. I'm actually going to shorten that a little bit. Let's go back and look at my robot. The next thing I want to add are the eyes. And I'm only going to build one at first. I'm going to do the same method, create a new layer just to make sure these stay separate. And then draw out an eye. I'm going to change it to, let's make it orange. Let's make it a brighter orange than that. Another way to change the color of a shape, uh, which this is as good a time as any to look at that, down in the Layers palette I have the name of the layer and the thumbnail next to it. 
If I double click on the thumbnail for a shape, this doesn't work for every kind of layer, but for a shape it does, it will bring up the color picker automatically and I can adjust it and see it happening live over here at the same time. So I'm going to switch that to more of a yellow. The next thing I want to do, rather than drawing out another one and trying to get it identical, I'm just going to do Command J and duplicate that layer. You'll see what happened when I hit that. I had this one selected. I hit Command J, which is du uh, the duplication shortcut key, and it created this new one called Ellipse to Copy. So these are two, my two eyes now. I can hold shift and select them both in the layers palette and move them together. Give the feeling of him looking back and forth as I do this, but that way I can try and center them up, basically. I'm, again, not going to try and get it perfect. We can always do that later. Right now, I just want to make sure that the pieces are there. All right, now we're going to move on to a part that's a little bit more complex, which is the creation of his arms which you'll notice one important aspect to this is that I cut gaps between the body and the arm so I'm going to show you how to put those shapes together same thing creating a new layer first and then going to select the rounded rectangle tool which I will click and drag out and again same treatment I'm going to change it to blue show transform controls using the checkbox up at the top and I want to rotate this when you have the bounding boxes out, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can see the cursor change with each one that I go to. If I go to the corner right here, if I use this, it will scale it. But if I pull out, you can see how it turns into a curved line with two arrows, one on each end. And that allows me to rotate it. I can even hold shift and get specific degrees, or I can just freeform it and do any angle that I want. I'm actually going to hold shift and look for a 45 degree angle which it actually tells me right there which angle I'm at and then I'm going to confirm that and pull it over here it looks like I had the wrong color on there because I was kind of guessing from the color picker uh, so there's another way around that as well if I do like I showed you earlier and go over to the thumbnail of this shape layer and double click it gives me the color picker and I can choose from in here I can also move the cursor off of the color picker and you'll see how it changes to an eyedropper tool. Now I'm hovering over the body here and since this is the blue that I actually want, I can click on it with the eyedropper and it will automatically change to match. Okay, so we have one arm here. What I want to do then is find a way to cut this gap between the two. There is a problem with this though, because if I go and grab something like the eraser here and then try to use it, it's giving me this little warning you can't do this symbol, a circle with a line through it and it does not let me erase a shape and that's because in Photoshop a shape is not actually a pixel image it's actually a vector while you're working inside Photoshop. Now that's a little bit complex, but let me just put it to you this way. If I am going to convert something, I'm sorry, if I want to erase something, draw on something, or use filters directly on something, I need to convert it to pixels first. That's really the simplest way to put it. Once I convert it to pixels, I can't resize it as many times as I want. It will start to look grubby and pixelated. Uh, so I'm only going to do this after I'm happy with where it's positioned. Here it's pretty simple. I'm happy with where it's at, so I'm going to convert it to pixels so I can erase part of it. The way that you do that is to right click, or if you're on a Mac, as you will be working in class, you will control click, hold down control and click on the name of the layer, not the thumbnail, but the name, and then go up here to where it says rasterize layer. This essentially means that you are converting it to actual pixels. So I'll rasterize that layer. I'm going to choose, using my eraser tool, it gives me parameters up at the top. I'm going to choose a regular hard brush. I had it set on a paintbrush that uh, I had custom downloaded from a painting that I was working on. And then I'm going to use this to carve part of my rounded rectangle off. Whatever you have selected is what it will try to erase. I'm cutting off part of my rounded rectangle, which I'll actually rename to just say arm by double clicking on the name and putting in the text. So here's the, here's the challenge though, I'm trying to get a nice clean line. And if you look over here to my other one, that's a nice clean line. That's what I want here using the eraser. 
So I'm going to undo that. Obviously that didn't work. So Command Z to undo. Here's the great thing about Photoshop. It will actually help you do straight lines even with a brush like this. What I have to do is click and hold and hold shift on the keyboard and it will do a straight line. I'm actually going to clean that up and do a better job. But click, hold shift, and then I can just sit here and work this up and down just a little bit to get the clean line that I want. I'm sorry, it's still just not perfect yet and I really want it to be. All right, let's try this one more time. There we go. That is much better. And that's working fine. Whenever you hold shift using a brush, it will allow you to create a straight line. That is extremely useful in a lot of different ways, especially for something like this. All right, so he has one arm. Obviously, I'm going to do something like I did for the eyes to duplicate it, but it has to be flipped in the other direction. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to do Command J and I'm going to make this arm 2 and now I should have two of them. You can see I move it around here. It looks like there's a little corner left that I forgot to erase because it was hidden by the body. That's fine. That's not going to hurt me. The next thing we'll have to do though is find a way to flip it. It's actually very easy to do. If I go up to the edit menu at the top, transform and then flip horizontal. So this is where it is. Edit menu, transform, flip horizontal. If I do that, I can move this in. And again, I'm going to get it to roughly match. I'm not going to I'm not going to get in a panic about it. I just want it in the general area. And there we go. Now I'm going to move on and quickly using kind of the same method create his feet here. You should be able to look and see pretty easily that it's just a rounded rectangle and then a triangle on the end I duplicated and flipped it when I was done. So I'm going to move fairly quickly through that. Our rounded rectangle tool, run it through the same basic process that I did before. There's that part. Um, there is one challenging aspect to getting a triangle though. They're actually kind of hard to get to in Photoshop. They shouldn't be, but they are. If I click and hold down, on the shape tool there is custom shape tool at the bottom. If I select that, mine is already up because I use tr a triangle on here fairly often. But what I would have to do is go up to this top bar after I've selected it, drop this down, drop down this little cog, and make sure this is set to, make sure I can find it here, shapes down at the bottom. If I do that, that's what gives me this list of shapes here. When you first pull it up, it's going to show you some, all kinds of strange shapes that can be used for a lot of different purposes, but sometimes finding basic geometric ones like this are a little bit difficult. But this is the easiest way to get to a triangle. So I'm going to select that one, and then that will let me draw out this triangle here. I'm going to hold shift to make sure I get a perfect one. I can always adjust it afterwards and put that one there. Now, what you just saw me do though, uh, I took kind of a risk there where I didn't add a new layer first. That can sometimes cause problems, so I'm glad that it didn't. Again, it's pretty spotty. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it, uh, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, honestly, if somebody knows more about Photoshop than me in that respect, I would certainly love it if they'd explain it. So sound off in the comments, except I think I have comments disabled for this, so don't worry about it. Alright, so I have these two parts now. I can select both of them and move it around, and that works. Uh, that, that serves my purposes pretty well. But it's also a little bit simpler just to select this one, hold shift, select the other, and then control click, and there's an option here you'll see that says merge shapes. That's really useful because that allows me to take this and merge it, and now they're literally one shape, one layer. I'm going to change the name of this to foot. I'm going to copy it. It's uh, misbehaving just a little bit. There we go. It worked that time. Uh, edit, transform, flip horizontal, and there's the foot. So we've got the majority of him laid down here. The very last thing that we have is just his antennae which are really easy to do. Uh, they look like little rods. They're actually just a rounded rectangle that's really small. So what I'm going to do is add my new layer here to make sure this doesn't mess up on me. 
go to the rounded rectangle and drag one out. It's nice and small like that. Remember I want it to uh, match the color. I'm going to turn it to a 30 degree angle and confirm that and then move them over here. Same thing, duplicate it, edit, transform, flip horizontal, and now I have my friend the robot. robot. And that job is pretty much done. So he looks pretty similar to this one. I didn't get him exact in his construction. He's a little bit taller, but that's fine. Uh, there's Obviously, I covered a lot of different tools and things in here. I try to cover these more specifically when I walk through the basic tutorial videos you already see. This one's just kind of a bonus. Uh, so make sure if uh, anything I went to quickly or if I didn't explain fully, you can always go back in the video, pause and rewatch, uh, or check some of the other tutorials for specifics on various tools and functions that we use within Photoshop.